Welcome to Studio Red Live from 106.9 The X. I'm Brian Jackson, I'll be your host today, and we're with music industry art students, Mac Burke, Jax Knight, and Azzy Sampson, also known as The Flood. Hopefully you guys really like The Flood's first song, The Flood Is Coming. So you guys are first years here at Fanshawe. Uh, can you tell me about the music industry arts program so far? Uh, so far it's pretty fun. Should I take the mic? You get to go into that one right there. Oh. So, so far it's pretty fun. My mistake. Um, a lot of the, a lot of what's made it special so far is just getting to meet other people, getting to experience a lot of this stuff firsthand. Um, I, I can already say like this wouldn't be happening right now if it wasn't for being in this program. Um, that's mostly it. And how long have you guys all been playing music? We'll start with you. Um, well, I met Jax a while ago, back when uh, one of the songs later in the set, I needed to show off for my performance class because I wanted to prove myself, and she could drum. So we started working together on that, and then it ended up becoming, becoming more of a project. Well, it, it, was, it was my project from the start, but then she's been helping out with it, and now we have Azzy in here too because Azzy's a good friend of mine, and we already all hang out anyway, so we just figured, why not just make this a whole band? Why not just make it a whole project? How long have you been playing music? Okay, wow. And you, Azzy? Um, I, I grew up in a heavily musical environment, but I didn't actually realize I was passionate about music until like maybe late 2019. So okay, so it's a recent love for you. Recent love. And uh, what's your favorite genre of music to play, guys? I guess the blanket term for me would be like alternative rock. It covers a lot of ground, but like most of it can technically be labeled like that. <laughs> And how would you describe alternative rock to our viewers out there? Um, stuff like, I, I guess, the, anything you see on my guitar here, Radiohead, King Gizzard, The Strokes, Jack White, pretty much like a lot of that like 2000s era garage stuff, plus like weirder stuff that's happening now in like the indie scene, I guess, quote unquote indie scene. And so tell me a little bit about what you guys are going to be playing next. Um, well, the next song's called Fake Love. I originally wrote it after I had seen a piece of graffiti in my hometown, Cambridge, Ontario. Uh, shout out everybody in Cambridge, Ontario, by the way. Um, something about the graffiti just captivated me, and I, I took a picture of it. It stuck with me ever since, and I thought, that'd make a great song title. And then I worked from there, and I ended up writing something kind of substantial out of it. Awesome. Take it away, guys. Here's the flood.
Welcome back to Studio Red Live from 106.9 The X. I'm your host, Brian Jackson, and you just all heard from The Wave. So tell me about, uh, yeah, I'll go over here for a minute. Tell me a little bit about the most rewarding parts of being in a group. Oh, I, I'd say it's being able to collaborate with other people and pitch an idea that's like, oh, hey, I have this one idea, and now you have other people that can kind of add to that idea and make it better in ways that you couldn't on your own. Okay, I like that. Anything else from you? I mean, the rewarding parts of being in a group? I would definitely agree with that. Like, a lot of these songs, like, I wrote, like, the chords and lyrics for, but we wouldn't have been able to develop them without their help. Okay. Like, and, and I mean both of them, not just Jax. I mean, although Jax has been here for a while, as he's also been a big help, um, it's just very exciting to see these songs come to life with their help. And tell me a little bit about what you're learning in MIA right now. Um, I hate to say it, not, not a whole ton, but... Like, the, the point of the program really is not as much about the learning more, it is about the networking and getting to meet other people, like getting to experience these things firsthand, knowing other people, finding the person who you need to, like, to collaborate with, too. Because you can't really do, a lot of this you can't do alone. I mean, I know we're in the era of, like, bedroom, bedroom musicians, bedroom producers, bedroom pop, etc. But a lot of this is, can be a lot better if you do it with someone else, and this is how you find people. Because I know the three of us are very like-minded individuals compared to, like, I know there's a lot of people in the program I like I'm friends with, but not like super close with, and so it's difficult to kind of communicate, collaborate. But with these guys, it's it's perfect. Like I finally found the people I can work with on this stuff, and it's just it's very rewarding. Well, you guys sound great together as a group. I'll tell you that. Thank you very much. So uh, tell me about one takeaway you have from the MIA program so far. Um, make sure that you find people that it, you surround yourself with people that you enjoy working with. The more you enjoy working with someone, the better this final product is gonna be. If you don't enjoy working with the people you're with, you're gonna end up with a pretty bad product. And what are your takeaways so far from MIA? Um, I've learned that I'm competent at things in a lot of ways I didn't realize I was. I've never had uh, anybody to bounce ideas off of, so it's mostly working by myself and uh, talking with other people in this program, I realize I really do I really do know what I'm talking about in more circumstances than I could have guessed if I had not come here. Awesome. And tell me a little bit about your musical inspirations, who you listen to for this sound, or where you got it from. Um, I constantly say that like a big inspiration for the music I'm trying to make is supposed to be like a cross between uh, the White Stripes and Car Seat Headrest. I'm trying to unlock like the exciting high energy of the White Stripes while still retaining the emotional resonance and like maybe vulnerability of Car Seat Headrest. Both are huge inspirations to me like musically. Um, so hopefully I can make something as good as either of them someday. <laughs> and tell me a little bit about what you're going to be playing next. Uh, well, the next song is called On Deaf Ears. It's about a lot of things, a lot of things about just feeling small, feeling unheard, feeling a lot, a lot I, I guess it's a little bit of a personal song in a way, but but it's, it's certainly about like, I mean, you know, it speaks for itself. I'll We're excited that. to hear it.
try to look nonchalant. They both said I really love you. China's loaned us cars. Admission. Gonna speak to the man in charge. The secretary says that he's on another line, so can I hold for a long, long time? I found out she's an angel. I don't think she knows that I know. Welcome back to Studio Red Live. I'm your host, Brian Jackson, and we are today with The Flood. So guys, tell me, what makes The Flood unique? Well, I feel like at the start of this uh, project, when I started writing songs, I, I must admit, I'm not the most skilled guitarist. I don't know how, to, sound do, great. I don't know how to run up a scale, but once I accepted that, I realized, you know what, maybe that's my whole thing. If I can do it, anyone else can. I want to show that like you don't need to know how to play guitar to be a guitarist, like a rock star even. And, and I think that's like the whole shtick, I guess. Yeah, no, that's great. And what are you guys planning on doing for next year? I'll go to each one of you, but let's start with you, Mac. Um, well, currently, for this project at least, the hope is that we can get like into a studio sometime next semester, sometime, hopefully, and like record some of these proper and try to get them out like as studio recordings, not just live performances. Okay. But hopefully. Any goals for the next year? Uh, next year, definitely want to get into more of the Okay, cool. That's, that's, really, that's, really interesting. that's really interesting. What about you? Um, next year, I'm planning on probably trying to like really get in uh, helping other people like get into their music and stuff. Um, you know, getting people who want to do certain things but don't understand what techniques they need to get to where they want to be. That's me. And like applying that stuff and helping them get the final sound on their studio or whatever. Well, that's awesome. I could definitely use some help with my music sound. That's for sure. So tell me, would you recommend the MIA program to other people? Uh, definitely. And why? I mean, it's mostly just because it's, it's completely broadened my horizons in ways I'd never expected. 
I, I, I'm getting what I expect to get out of the program, I didn't get, but I got something way better, which is just motivation and a reason to push myself to do stuff like this. And you guys definitely have your own sound. Do you guys prefer performing covers or originals? Um, I guess for the most part. I mean, technically, it's better for us to play originals, but the one cover we have right now, the one we just did, um, She's an Angel by They Might Be Giants, it's definitely the most fun song that we play when we practice. <laughs> but, I mean, when we, because I, I have like a list of songs, I have good ideas of, for covers, which hopefully if we get more time, we can like work those out. So I'd say more fun to play, probably covers. Okay. And, oh, sorry. And where do you promote your music? Um, haven't had much of a chance to set up proper promotion yet, but we do have a band camp page, um, as well as social medias on Twitter and Instagram. Not super populated yet, but you can find each of those pages at the Flood CA. Um, that's Bandcamp, Instagram, and Twitter. I believe there's also a YouTube page we have. I don't know if it's under the username the Flood CA, but I'll be sure to set that up as soon as I'm, th I'm done this. Well, I got. I know everybody will be out there looking. So it's the Flood CA. Make sure you guys check it out. And last question for you guys: How did you come together as a band? How did you find each other? Just a little bit more on that. Uh, well, I mentioned earlier, Jax was just, someone mentioned that she could play drums when I was looking for someone to set up the, I was trying to perform the last song that we have, the one we're going to do next, because um, I wanted to show off that I could write songs, because I felt like, you know, bad guitarist, can't do anything, kind of worthless in this program, but all of a sudden, you know, this guy can write songs, this guy can write, like, catchy stuff. So I came to Jax, she helped me out, we practiced for a while, and then we kind of ended up getting into it. Okay. Uh, then we ended up performing at Fanshawe's own uh, Outback Sh Outback Shack? Outback Shack. Um, they had an open mic night, so we did a set of a few songs, which is actually up on that same Bandcamp page, if anyone wants to check it out. Plug, plug. Um, and then, well, Azzy and Jax were already friends when I met Jax, and I ended up hanging out with Azzy a lot afterwards, and I realized, let's just make the three of us this project, because if Azzy can play bass, then we... It's better than finding some bases that you don't know, right? Yeah, well, it's a, ex it's Kinsmet. You guys sound great together. You obviously have some chemistry on stage together, so that's really nice. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have today for Studio Red Live. So we'll be ne we'll be live again next week uh, with Studio Red Live right here uh, with some more MIA students. Until then, guys, why don't you take us away with your last song? Thank you.